Hi everyone and welcome to the channel. Today we're going to be looking at walled surfaces and walled objects and the reason why something like the 3D offset will fail when you're creating these. We're going to be using the offset, the thickness and a number of other different ways of creating a walled surface. So for instance this object here has been created with this void inside using a different method to this one and this one. This one here will fail. So we've looked at some kind of other workflows to create that surface within there. And also how to fix the geometry because it's failed. This one has also failed. So we've taken a different workflow to fix that just by tweaking some of the values in settings in the data view. So this is quite a common problem. It's not down to free CAD. It's actually down to the CAD engine underneath. The open source CAD libraries that are used not just in FreeCAD but in other CAD programs as well. There are ways and means of getting around that and checks you should do on your geometry before going to offset it. I'm hoping this video will get you around some of those problems so you don't go through the headache of making your models and not being able to offset those surfaces to create a void within. So let's have a look at these techniques. If you like what you're seeing, please subscribe to the site. I also have a Ko-Fi or a coffee site that you can donate to if you so desire. And that's at ko-fi.com forward slash M-A-N-G-0. I also run a Patreon where you can subscribe and get extra content. And that's at www.patreon.com forward slash mango jelly solutions. Any money that's kindly donated will be used to span the channel. So in FreeCAD, there's a number of ways of walling out an object or creating a thickness in an object. When we're talking about walling out or creating a thickness, what we're talking about is taking such thing as a cube and creating an inner void like so, or taking this shape, which is a bit more organic and creating the thickness in here to be able to 3D print these or hollow out the inside so we can place something in there. This is a common practice in CAD and it has its own challenges no matter what CAD package you're using. We've all been through the process of creating, say, an offset with something like this. And what I'm going to do is just bring back, I used a shape binder with this one to bind to another shape I had, because I quite like the top of the shape. And I knew it was gonna be quite a complex object to wall. We've all been there, we've selected it and gone to the offset and nothing's happened and we've gone over and we've tried to hit OK and we get this B rep tool error. Now this isn't a free CAD error. This is the underlying CAD engine that's within FreeCAD and in other CAD programs. So you're going to get this error with other open source CAD solutions that are out there. But why do we get these type of errors? Well, it is quite simply down to the way the geometry has been created. And when we start looking at it in depth, it becomes a bit obvious of why we're getting those errors. Let's take the following example. I'm just gonna do a 2D offset with a single piece of open geometry. So I'm gonna come over in the sketcher and create a new sketch along the XY plane. And I'm going to create something in here with the polyline. And we're going to start with basically an open box. And I'm going to place a line that goes down to here, like so. Let's place another line in here, something like this. So we've got this piece of geometry here. It's an open sketch. It's something that we wouldn't do, but it gives us a demonstration of what actually happens. Let's come back to the part workbench and create a 2D offset with this. So I've got the sketch selected. I'm going to come into the 2D offset tool and create a 2D offset. You can see the recompute has failed straight away. So I'm going to change this to skin. And you can see, well, we can't recompute this at the moment. Let's just remove some geometry. Let's remove this one and hit delete and hit close. So that's 2D offset that now. Now we've got some results. I'm gonna to go to the skin because it's easier to see what's going on. 
Now, if we look at this corner point here, this is a point of interest to see what's happening. We have a 2D offset with a join type of arc. So what's happening is pushing our set outwards, which is successful, and it's coming around and creating an arc around here. So it's creating a fillet around here. If I change this down to intersection, rather than creating a fillet, it will continue the line on both sides until they meet. This has problems in itself because if this line was too shallow, for instance, let's come in to about here and hit close, then do the 2D offset and change it to intersection, you can see straight away and skin, we've got some problems. Because that line is too shallow, it's having problems intersecting that line. So it's coming out from here and then it's trying to create another one and this could carry on right out here somewhere. So these are the kind of problems we're going to encounter when we create the offsetting. So I'm just gonna offset this out, which you can see we've got problems straight away. Setting this to arc and then we get this tangency. We can see the arc fillet that comes around here that goes all the way around here. Notice another problem as well. We're pushing this out. We've got a nice offset happening in here. So we've got no problems with this offset. That's start to go the other way. So what we're doing is decreasing the offset and what's going to happen at one point when it hits zero, it's gonna to flip to an inner offset. So now we're going inwards. See this point? As we go inwards, this creates a solid, so a solid in here, but we've lost the line. Let's bring this back up, and you can see what's happening there. We've actually lost that intersection within that gap. Let's move this back, and you can see our intersection is starting here. And though these aren't joined, that's not a problem at the moment. This is not what we're looking at. We can feel that offset and they are now joined. But you can see this problem in here. So as we reduce this, we're starting to get into error. But we increase it and our offset starts to take. So you can see it reducing right down. Once it gets past here, then it doesn't know what to do. This is on a 2D object. The exactly same thing is happening in 3D space when we're doing a 3D offset. So if you think about if we had, say, a NURB surface, a more organic shape, these angles are going to be in all different directions. So we've got all different twists and turns in our surface that could intersect each other and cause this problem. So making this fail quite easily. Let's take this from a B-spline example. So more complex object. So new sketch on the XY plane. I'm gonna use a B-spline and I'm gonna create a B-spline object in here. Now just randomly add in some points to create this B-spline. This B-spline is quite simple and we'll close that. We use the sketch, look at the view. Let's bring up the line width like so. So we've got this in here. Let's take that sketch over in the part and create a 2D offset. Set this to skin, and what I'm going to do is just bring this out in this direction. You can see this offset's taken. I'm gonna come into the offset and just up the line width so we can see what's happening to four as well. Now let's come in. You can see we've got a nice continuity across here. They look a bit jagged because it's our deviation, it's just a display in. But we've got a nice curve between here. So this is our original arc at the top, our original B spline. We've got a nice arc here and a nice division between here. And we've got a constant offset of 3.3 millimeters. Set this to intersection, it's still the same. It's absolutely clean. What's happening is that if we roll over here, we can see that this is now divided 
into a number of edges to create this offset. So as we increase this, we can see we will get more and more edges. Let's put this to say nine. As this gets further away. So look here, you can see that our edges are starting to converge on each other. So we've got one here, we've got one, two, three, four edges there. So we've got more edges as they converge. So the objects get more and more complex because it's adding more and more edges. And we're starting to get a kink in here. The reason for this, if I okay that and create a new sketch, is because the continuity between the two sides is starting to change somewhat. New sketch on the XY plane. And I'm going to add a line in here. And now, if we look at the arc and draw a line that's tangent to that arc, and the same this way, something like that. So it's touching that arc. We can see where they converge this continuity here. We've got an arc that comes around and follows that. So there's no convergence of these two sides. In this case down the bottom, we have a convergence. So we can see if we place lines here, they cross right at that sharp point. They're converging on each other. It's a bit off, but we can get the idea here. So if I come into the offset and start decreasing this, we can see our arc is starting to take and we're getting a cleaner transition between these two. That's okay that. And we can see we've got less arcs going across here. So we've got only two now rather than the three or four that we had before. And if we move these, we can see that the continuity now of when it starts to curve, the converging point is above the surface. Creating a more consistent offset. This is fine. So if I set this back to say 90, this will still be a valid offset. Well, that won't be because you can see how it's broken down there. So let's set that to 40. So this is fine. You can see the offsets taken and the fill offset. But we have this kink. And we're starting to break down here as well. So you can see if I push this further, then we're starting to get into problems. We're not getting the same offset as in the top. So this object here is an example of the problem we were talking about. It's a surface that's been created from an approximation curve. This is in the Curse Workbench. And it's created by two rails that go along the side here. Let's just hide the sketch that makes up the rails. So we've got a continuous join curve between those rails, which is just one sketch. So I'm just going to hide those and bring back the sketch. So this is a normal sketch that goes along here and out of that we created two join curves that create the beast lines and then we've got this slot sketch here which is also a join curve which will create a beast spline. So they're all beast spline sketches or beast spline objects and an approximate curve is created across those to allow for this sweep along two rails. Now, because we use B-spline objects and this is a NURB surface, this is where the problem can occur. So you can see how the profile is morphing between two profiles. So there's a profile here, a circular profile. That sits here as well, this one here. So this is a common surface where this will fail. And I've made it fail. If I add the offset, you can see we've got recompute failed. And if I hit OK, we get the B rep offset API, make offset not done. If I cancel that and click on it and come up to the part 
and what we're going to do is check the geometry. Make sure that if we come down here, we got the individual BOP checks all checked and the run BOP check. If I run that check now, we can see we've got some problems in that we have some invalid edges and some invalid geometry. So we've got two invalid edges here. Let's close that. Let's see how we can fix this. Going back to what we learned about the continuity, let's change the continuity of this surface. So we've got the approximate curve here and to make this fail, I changed the continuity to C0. If I up this to C1 and then do the offset, our offset will take. If we think about what we were saying, we have this curve in here. And as we go along the surface, it's forever changing. So the surface is forever changing. So at some point along that surface, a problem occurred. That caused, say, a crossover of edges or intersection of edges, etc. We don't quite know what happened in there. But the first thing is, is to go in and change the continuity of the curves or change the B-spline itself. For instance, if I cancel that and go to this approximation curve and set that to C0, then we've also got the profiles themselves if I can find them, which are the join curves, this one here. And if I come down, this has got, if I look at the shape approximation, and with curves workbench, all the shapes are approximated. So this could be an issue as well. And we've got continuity in here, so we can change the continuity in here. These are quite up quite high. So if I change these, I don't expect the offset to work. So as we can see, the offset hasn't worked there. But because I changed the continuity actually on the surface itself to a C1 and applied the offset, we can see that offset has taken. Another example of this, if I cancel out and we'll just close out that and create a new document is with a continuous B-spline. So I'm going to come into the sketcher and create a sketch along the XY plane and create a continuous B-spline with the B-spline tool and make something like this. And I'm going to use the thickness tool with this one. So what's happened is that this B-spline, if I create a part extrude of this of 20 mil, if I look around this, then the seam will be just here. So we've got a continuous bleed spline that goes all the way around here, this continuous surface, just wrapped around and connected, a bit like a cone, but obviously more complex. If I take the top here and create a thickness, you can see that recompute has failed once again. So the thickness is quite similar in the process of the offset. We've got a join type, as you can see, and an intersection, etc. And let's change this to minus two. So it's going inwards now. And intersection, well, we can see that it's not working. Let's fix that problem with that B spline. I've deleted the sketch and the object. And I'm going to come over to the sketcher and re sketch another B spline object using the XY plane. This time, I'm going to create two edges for the B-spline. So I'm going to take a B-spline and come around, hit escape. I've got the auto constraints on, so I'm going to connect up to this point, coincident constraint, and come all the way back around and connect up to this point and hit escape. So now we've got some closed geometry. Make sure it's closed by pulling the endpoints, and we can see that's all closed in there. Let's check this one. Now we're happy, we can take that sketch over in the part workbench, click on the sketch, and click in the extrude to say 30 mil. So we create our extrusion. Let's create the thickness by clicking on the top and selecting the thickness tool. 
straight away we can see the thickness has been applied now if I hit OK that's now applied to our object so we can see the B spline by simplifying it creating two edges we got more chance for that thickness to take this segues nicely into the thickness tool and how to use it so the thickness tool is also available from the part design as well as the part and it allows you to create a thickness between objects so if I create a simple object on here saying a square and close that and of course we would use an internal part in here to create the wall but if I just extruded that by 30 mil and create a thickness on here by selecting the top part thickness that removes that top and thickens the walls by a millimeter we can send the thickness inwards by minus one or whatever millimeter you want so five mil you notice how the thickness has changed so when we go outwards we get an arc thickness and this thickness also does the bottom as well if I change that to intersection then we get the intersection thickness it's the same as the offset the edges are extended outwards until they meet with the intersection with the arc they are filleted like so. so you can see it's filleted down the bottom if we're going inwards then that is obviously different because we keep our original outside but we're adding the thickness inwards we don't get the filleting around here so we've got that there we can also add faces so I can add this face and hit done and we've removed it from this face let's take faces again and control select say this one and this one hit done and we've removed the faces from the side and the top and we've kept that thickness the same thickness all the way around if we had say our primitive tools our primitive objects so two cylinders right click transform and rotate this so it's a kind of right angles to this let's bring that into there so we created this shape here let's make sure they're embedded properly so we've got one of these parts embedded into the other part just going to increase the size of this radius to three millimeters and we'll take both of these and create a union between those so what we've got is basically two pipes connected together if I take the top of this pipe and create the thickness you can see what's happened the thickness has gone outwards which involves including both the first pipe and the second pipe and inside you can see the hole is created throughout if I set this inwards so that's minus one we get the thickness in there notice the filleting so we've got some filleting going on in here as well change that to intersection and now it's nice and clean inside so with these curved objects we was able to create this fillet in here so it's just loaded up this example here now this is a more complex object and we've used the thickness against here let's delete that thickness and show how it's been made up and we'll come out to the sketch and view section so what I've created is a sphere and then created this shape so we've got this shape here which is just a simple shape that's been placed upon here what happens is that we extrude the sketch through the sphere and use a common between those so taking the extrude control select the sphere part then come down to the boolean operations and create an intersection also known as a common and it's this icon on the toolbar so it's an intersection between those 
Once we've got our intersection, we can hollow out the object using the thickness by taking both the tops faces here. The reason why there's two faces here is because this arc is part of the sphere and it's created the faces in there. Let's create the thickness. At the moment, it's gone outwards. When we start to lower the thickness, we can see it starts to go inwards, like so. We can see where the arrows start to occur. So you can see this lip here, how close it is to this point. So the minute it starts crossing over here, we start to go into error. So we have to look out for this with our models. If we back this off, then we create the thickness outwards and we've got an inner void. So we're now going to concentrate on this surface here. The surface has been created through a loft between a binder and its clone. So if I hide that loft, we can see inside here, I've just thickened up the lines so we can see them. We have a shape binder and the other one is a clone of that shape binder that's been scaled. So we click on that binder, you can see there's some scaling here. And we've scaled this, moved it, and created a loft between the two using the loft to create the thickness. Why did I have to do that? Well, if I bring back the binder, and this has been created from a common between two objects as we saw before, and I took one of the faces, created a subshape binder and deleted the common. The surface is in error. So I can do a geometry check against this because if I try to offset it, and let's click that and 3D offset, you can see, well, we're getting the recompute fail down here. Hit OK, and we've got no parameters on surface. So this is telling me that the surface is broken in such a way that is causing the offset not to take. To check that, I'm gonna click on it, come up to part, and use the check geometry tools. Run BOP checked, it's checked, and all the individual BOP checks are checked here. Let's run those checks and we can see straight away we're getting problems. Clicking on one of those will show us the problem edges and the problem faces. So I've put this into a state where it will error, show you the different workflows we can take to fix this. FreeCAD has no way of automatically correcting these errors. It can check for them, but it can't correct them. That's up to you to fix the geometry underneath. Let's close that. So what I'm looking to do is recreate this surface. Now, one way to do this is come back to the part design and I'm gonna bind those edges. And the reason why I'm doing this, I've just highlighted that edge there and I'll control select the other edges. This is a bit small, so let's come into that binder. Click the binder, click the view, come down to the line color, which is yellow at the moment. Let's have a look at line width and put this up to four so we can see that line going all the way around there. Control, control select all these edges. So let's come over. Now I should have made it yellow because I can't really see them being selected. This yellow is selected, that's better. Control select all those. Got those there. And use the sub shape binder. Let's hide that binder now. We've got this edge. Let's see if that's fixed the geometry. So click on it, come over to the part workbench and use the part check geometry and run our checks. We got no errors. This is good. So we know this geometry is true. So we shouldn't have any problems when we come to creating 3D offset with this but we need to recreate that surface. This is where we start using something like the surface workbench. Now, the shape of this should determine the shape of the surface. So it should be a near shape because we've 
already taken this from the binder. So it's curve characteristics will all be there. So I want to take all these edges and create a fill-in surface. Let's add the edges and click all of the edges. This comes around here. It's starting to take shape already. And this one, and we've got our surface. Let's okay that. Back over to the part. Let's compare this surface with our original binder. So we look and we got the surface. We got the binder of this edge. We hid that binder. So let's have a look. It's basically near enough. So you can see there is a slight difference in there. We can fix that by using a curve in the surface workbench to connect up and adjust this curvature. But I'm going to go with this. This is fine for my liking. And let's hide that binder. And let's apply the offset. Click on the surface, apply a 3D offset. And we can see it's taken. So straight away, that's taken. Increase the offset, fill the offset, hit OK. And we've got our offset piece. So we fixed the geometry and created the offset. Now there is another way of doing this. If we don't want to fix that geometry and we want to use that binder in a loft. I'm just going to delete the loft and delete some other objects in here. Let's delete this binder as well. So I am now back to where I was before. Not bothered about the history. So I've got this binder here. And let's come over to the view and just reduce the line size down. So I've got line width set to one. So we've got the original binder. There are a number of ways of making this actually thick. I could basically extrude this and set the vector, which is the Y. This is not recommended because if I extrude this now, say three mil, it extrudes it straight up. If you want this kind of effect, then that's fine. But it means that everything is extruded on a straight path, which may be what you want. But there is a better way of doing this. If we want to keep the shape, we we'll take the bind up and come over to the draft workbench. And this will be any shape that you're using. This could be a surface, this could be an edge, etc. The part workbench is quite flexible when it comes to doing loss across different types of surfaces and different types of objects. So the binder is just a surface. This could be a surface if you want to. I'm going to click that binder, come up to modifications and use the clone tool. I've cloned the binder now. So I hide the binder, it's the clone that's underneath it. Let's take that clone and on the data tab, I'm going to come over to the scale. I'm going to scale this clone down to 0.95 across the X, Y and Z. You can see how it's cloning down and reducing the size 0.95. So we've got our clone which we need to place. So click on the placement, click on the position. And I'm looking to get it in the middle of this. So let's take the X and move it along the X this way and reduce the X down. That'll do us. We could move it along the Y if we wanted to. Make sure it doesn't come out the top. I'm going to leave it like that. Now let's come over to the part workbench. Let's first get rid of this grid in. Let's turn the grid in off. So come to the part workbench. I'm going to loft, use our lofting tools. So we've got the binder. We've got the clone of the binder. So come out to part and loft. And we add our binder. We add 
our clone binder and we create solid, so create a solid between them. And hit OK. Come into the loft and we need to hide both of these. So control click both of them, press the space bar. We've got the surface from our loft. Now the good thing about this is that we can modify this surface. So we can see that the surface, it follows basically the same as what an offset surface would follow. The curvature is going inwards here. So it's reduced the size down and it's pushed forward. If I take that binder and change say the Y axis and hit enter, we see the binders move back. So this binder here, press the space bar if I hover over it, it's moved backwards. So let's move it back again to minus two, hit enter. We're getting a different type of cross section here. So I can push this right forwards, say 11, control R, and you can see what we're getting here. And move this back. And you can see the different effects we can have. So we can use that for different applications. So I'm getting a much cleaner straight cut across there. So this workflow where we've lofted one object with a clone of itself, we've reduced the clone down inside and lofted to a solid. So we've been through the offset, we've been through the thickness. We've been through the loft to create the thickness, also the extrude, which is a bit of a dirty way of creating the thickness in there. There are some others as well, and that's where we get to more complex objects. So let's have a look at surfacing workflows. So for this one, we're gonna create an inner and outer skin in a different way. So let's create a new document, XY plane and okay. And I'm gonna be using a surfacing workflow for this one. And I'm gonna use a very simple object, something that's got symmetry. And I'm going to use a ellipse. Something like this. Strain that to the center. Quince and constraint, and we'll place that on the center line as well. That sets some distance. Now it's important with this one that we have all the parameters set up. So all our distance parameters, our dimensions, etc. So 120. And this one we're going to set up with. 50 and close that. So we've got this ellipse here. Let's click on the front and we're going to create another sketch and this is going to be the top surface. Let's make sure that nothing's selected, create another sketch. And we're looking at the XZ plane and okay. I'm going to pull in these points to so this point here We can draw this as one single side and then mirror it over if we wanted to. And I'm going to place a B spline in here and come over and connect up like so. Hit escape. So we've got a B spline surface. And I'm going to take these two points. Place some height in here, 30 mil. Make sure these two are in line. And now we want distance away. So let's make some symmetry between these two and this line. And we'll set the distance between these two as four millimeters. So we have this shape. Let's close that. So we've created this shape here. We may want to create another curve, so we may want to split this B spline into two and create a curve around here. But I'm just gonna go for this for the time being. Let's come over to the surface workbench and surface between these with a filling tool. So the filling surface, add the edge we do this edge and this edge. So we get the curve here 
you can see we've got problems because we've used the arc going around the outside of okay that that's not going to take so let's delete that surface and come back to this arc and basically remove part of this arc so let's use the trim this tool here and trim this arc away so I'm going to use one side and then take this arc control click the horizontal line use the symmetry or sketch sketch tools and symmetry and then we can join up this arc because at the moment it's not joined it's control said that highlight that point there box selection constraint take this arc and this point point on object constraint and box selection around here to try that again going this way and constrain that down so we've got this one here we can see that it's still not constrained control z that and the constraint is this center point here so make sure we go from the right direction because if i go this way i'm going to select all those so i need to select what's ever under that square as a whole object which are those center points and constrain those in the center so this arc looks like it's constrained and though it's saying it's not it's not going green or anything but it looks okay it's obviously something missing in there but we're okay so we've got 50 and 120 let's close that so we've got the two arcs or the ellipse sides and the top point on well, the surface workbench we use the filling tool and add the edges so we can add this edge and come over and add this edge so we've got this flat ellipse there okay now what we're going to do is come into the surface let's double click that again and come into the edge constraints so this will constrain the curvature add edge and add to this top edge so we've got this curvature in here come up and okay now this will probably 3d offset we can check that by coming over to the part and clicking on it and using the 3d offset so that does 3d offset there we get a nice offset which is taken and when we go inwards it will 3d offset inwards as well but let's say that's failed we've got this that's failed let's cancel that what do we do well we have the sketches and the surface I'm gonna add a group in here so I'm gonna click on unnamed right click create group and this is going to be the outer surface so rename this as outer surface I'm gonna click the sketch and shift click the surface that will select all of those and drag them into the outer surface now we've got an outer surface here so create an outer surface we can duplicate this as one group so we can duplicate all of these in here and create the inner surface without going through and creating these again click on the outer surface edit duplicate selection we get this object selection pop up and it's got all that's selected so we've got outer surface the sketch sketch 001 and the surface so all of these in here let's hit ok a new group will be created which we just rename to inner surface so this surface if we double click on it we can see that it's using the new sketches let's cancel that if I come into the sketches now I can change these so let's double click the first sketch and change this 120 to 110 and this is where symmetry helps because this is a symmetrical object and we've used symmetry in here so it's pulled them in in these sides as well and double click this one to 40 let's pull that in here close that and you can see what's happening so the inner surface is coming away 
we can hide this outer surface if we want by pressing the space bar on it. I'm just going to leave it there for reference. So we've got some problems here and the outer surface is popping through. So let's look for a look at the other sketch and I can see the problem straight away. So this 30 millimeters here needs to be reduced down to 20 mil. And let's do the same with this four mil. Reduce that to say three mil and close that. We have a bit of a problem. So you can see, well, the surface has gone up, up and over. So let's click that surface and see what we've got. So if we look down, we've got degree. Let's set this to two. So that's the lowest it can go. And we can see that's fixed that problem. And if I click on this surface here and press the space bar, we can see that we've got an inner and outer surface. And we can change these. So leaving the sketch here is quite nice because we can see the inner and outer surfaces and how this is gonna change. So let's click on this one. And let's go for this one here. Let's change this to 25 millimeters. There we go. And we can change this one as well to two mil and close up. And let's bring back the other surface. So I'm happy with those now. Let's hide those surfaces. And now we can do some other surfacing in here. So I'm going to take these two, control select them, these two sketches, and close the surface with a ruled surface. So we've got a problem in there. We've got a full ruled surface going across. We can sometimes fix that by coming into the ruled surface, coming into the orientation, and setting these to forward. And that's fixed that. If it doesn't work, then set them to reverse. Let's do the same on the other side. Control click both of those and click the ruled surface. Again, come in, change that ruled surface and set that to forward. Click off, that's all fixed now. If you do have problems with that and it doesn't take, then use the surfacing workflow, the fill in surface and create a surface across here. So what's happened now is that we've got the ruled surfaces and the two surfaces within we can connect all these up and close this surface by selecting them all, two rule surfaces, the inner surface and the outer surface, part, compound, make compound. We have a compound surface now, which is all those connected together. And I can click on that compound surface, cut part and convert to solid. Hide the compound and now we have a solid surface to work with. It's not going to be parametric. If we want it parametric, let's delete that, bring back the compound. And what we do is use the Curves Workbench. Click on the compound, MISC, parametric solid. It's gone green, we have a parametric solid now. Anything that changes with this compound, say this sketch, and let's change this to 28 millimeters and close that. It will be applied to this as well. And let's do this one as well. So we've got 40, 45, close that. And you can see that's taken across there. So that allows some parametric capabilities across there. So that's another way of closing that surface and creating that offset. So from this tutorial, we got a lot to take away. We've got the reasons why a surface may fail. We've got ways of checking geometry to finding out if the surface is gonna fail or what the problem with the surface is, ways of fixing it, and a number of other workflows of creating an inner and outer surface if we need to, if one of those techniques do fail or one of those workflows do fail. So I hope you found that video useful. Please let me know of any workflows that you follow because it's always good to enrich that content and add those to the comments of that video. Hope you enjoyed that. 
and I hope to see you again soon. If you like what you're seeing, please subscribe to the site. I also have a Ko-Fi or a coffee site that you can donate to if you so desire. And that's at ko-fi.com forward slash M-A-N-G-0. I also run a Patreon where you can subscribe and get extra content. And that's at www.patreon.com forward slash mango jelly solutions. Any money that's kindly donated will be used to expand the channel. Thanks a lot for watching and subscribing and I'll see you again soon.